Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and it's time for a new teapot cozy and I have quite an unusual pattern to share with you today. I've designed this teapot cozy to look like a blooming flower so you're going to need a couple of pattern pieces and both of these are going to be in the description and you're going to be able to download them and download them at hundred percent. You're going to have petals and the leaves. For the petals you have a fold line so you're going to need to take a nice big piece of paper, fold it in half and on that fold line put your fold and cut out that shape and you're going to end up with a big petal. It's going to be the same for the leaf. Take your paper, fold it in half, put it along the fold line and cut that piece out and you're going to have this sort of star shape. These are the two pieces you're going to need to make the tea cozy. We're going to cut all the pieces out out of two pieces of fabric plus some batting. Take the right sides of the fabric and place them together. And I have just two scraps of green and the batting is going to go on the bottom so I'm going to layer those pieces together. The next we'll be tracing out this pattern piece right on the top fabric. You want to just make sure you have fabric underneath all of the pieces and that you have batting underneath them all. You also need to have just a little bit of space in between the two patterns because this will need to be a seam allowance. So you need to trace this out twice. And because flowers and leaves are not perfect, you do not have to trace them perfectly either. Just put the pattern down and just go around the piece. And it doesn't have to be exact. So just trace around them. It's just kind of giving you a guideline onto where the pieces are going to go. So I have two traced. Now before I pin them together, what I want to do is put a hole in one piece of fabric just in the center. And I find it's easier to do now than trying to separate those layers afterwards. So I can just take that fabric and just do a little snip so I know I'm going to be able to grab from that area. Lay it out flat and pin those layers together. I like to pin so that the point of the pins are coming out into those petals and go through all three layers. So I have a piece, it's about 16 inches by 13 inches and I'm able to get that in. Now I can take this to the machine and I'm going to stitch right over to those lines that I drew. And Again, you don't have to be really exact, but use some nice small stitches because you're going to trim this off afterwards and leave the layers together while you do it. So just stitch right over top of both of those drawing marks. Now I'm going to be able to take the pins out and trim about a quarter of an inch all the way around both of those little petals. So both of those pieces are cut out. This needs to be trimmed down and turned right side out. In order to do that, we need to snip right into each of these corners. So take a nice pair of sharp little scissors and snip right up to the threads in all of those corners. You don't cut the threads, you're just going to go right to that edge. So all of those will need to be snipped. See how it's snipped right to those threads. The next will be trimming off the points. Just trim off those points going right to those threads. From here we can turn it right side out or we can do a little bit more trimming. I like to trim the batting right up to the thread line. If you get a little pair of scissors you can go right along that edge and I'm only trimming the batting. I'm not trimming any of the fabric. With that batting trimmed away and that hole in the fabric, I now am going to be able to turn it right side out. And if that hole is not big enough, you're able just to make it a little bit bigger so you can pull all of these ends in. And with each petal, I'm going to poke that out so it's nice and flat and by trimming off that extra batting you're going to have a nice sharp area. 
You won't need to worry about that center seam because you're never going to see it. But take it to the iron and give it a good press and have all of those edges come out nice and flat. When it's pressed, you're going to need to do some top stitching. So top stitch all the way around the edge. Then in the center, just do some lines that come out from the center because you want to make these into leaves. And you don't need to set up the machine for quilting. You're just going to be able to run the stitches right with your machine. I just left the feed dogs up and I went and just back stitched until I had some little areas. And by doing that, that sort of covers up that hole anyways along the bottom. You're going to need to do that to both of these pieces. I'm going to do the same idea with the petals. I have two pieces of fabric together. These are both right sides. With my scrap batting underneath, I've layered them up. I need to just trace those petals and I'm going to need six petals. So I'm going to do three of this color combination and three of another color combination. I'm going to put that petal down and just trace it. It doesn't have to be exact because petals for flowers are not all the same. So this will not have to be all the same. I just want the general shape. I have the one shape, two and three. And pin. So I'm going to take the pins so that the points are going towards the seam. Now with each of these petals, you need to cut off one end. And it won't matter which end. You're just going to draw a line because this is where you're going to start and stitch up and come down. You're going to need a little area that you need to turn this right side out. So here's just the one end that I'm going to cut off. I'm going to start stitching here, go all the way up and around and stop stitching there. And do this to all of your petals and you will need six petals. I now can take the pins out and cut around each one of these petals and leave just a little bit of a seam allowance. And where I drew that line, I'm just going to cut it right off. That's why I started and stopped there. Take your little scissors and trim off that batting up to that seam allowance. And trim off that point. Now we can turn all of these little petals right side out. And you're going to turn them out between the two pieces of fabric and that will leave the batting inside. If you go between the batting and the fabric, it's not going to work. So just make sure that you turn them between the two pieces of fabric. Poke your little point out and then just turn them right side out. Just make sure all of those seams are nice and straight and right up against that edge. And take it to the iron and give it a good press. I have six big petals. Now you can do them all in the same color or you can switch up the colors. This took four fat quarters so I had one of each of the colors. I'm going to put the stitching like I did on the leaves for the petals and I'm going to use a variegated thread. This one is from Superior Threads and it has a lot of different colors in it so I think it'll look really nice. I'm going to stitch and then I'm going to do just three lines right down the center of this petal. I now have six petals with these long lines in them. And those lines make them look more like flower petals. I have six flower petals and two leaf petals. On the pattern piece, you'll see two little marks right up at the top. That is going to be a placement for holes. Now you can do two small buttonholes or if your machine will do little eyelet holes, that would be fine too. And what you're going to want to do is do two up at the top of each leaf. And that is going to make this tea cozy reversible. I'm just going to mark the buttonholes up near the top. They don't have to be exactly in this position, so I'll take them and mark them so that I'm not running over my center marks. And each one can be slightly different. 
I now have two little buttonholes up at the top on all of the petals. Now we're going to be able to put this together. I've done yellow so I can do yellow petals or I can mix them. It doesn't matter how you lay out your petals. You're going to need to take the petals and put them in a circle. I need all of these edges just semi-touching. So just put them so that they form some kind of a circle so that it's as flat as you can get. So now I have that circular shape. And once I have this shape done, I'm going to attach my little leaves on. The only thing that I really need to watch for is I want one of these areas that it comes in to be in one of the areas that come in because this is going to be where the handle is and the spout. So it doesn't matter which area you put them in, they just need to line up on one of those openings. And I'm going to pin those on. Now I have one big flower. If you take this and turn it over, you're going to be able to stitch right around this little opening. You want to stitch as close to the inside as you can because the next row you're going to go a little outside. So put on your green thread and just stitch all the way around. When you do that row of stitching, just be careful about the pins being on the other side. Make sure that you have all of those edges stitched down. Now we can flip it over and take those pins out. We now get to put the next stem on. And I'm going to pull two leaves back just so I can see where the points are. So I can just approximately line up those points. Then I can put that back down. And I'm going to pin this piece on and I'm going to pin so that the pins are up at the top because I need to turn this over and stitch again. And in this time, I'm going to end up going through both the leaves at the bottom. Now when I turn this over, I'm going to be able to follow that first stitching line, but I'm going to go about a quarter inch around it. That way I'm securing those leaves on in two different areas. So follow that stitching line and go around. Don't stitch right up along this edge because you want this to fall a little bit loose when it's on. The tea cozy is now done. If you lift up the leaves, you need to make sure that all of those petals are stitched in and that there's no loose pieces hanging out. The next is going to be putting this on the teapot. You're going to need one piece of ribbon. The ribbon is going to go in and out on each petal. The side that's going to go in the inside is where the ribbon is going to lay. And you're only going to have that little piece for the outside. If you want it the other way, you're going to have to put the ribbon in in the opposite way. So this now will be the inside. And you need to do that for all of the petals. And you can pull them up as you go along. So all the ribbon is in the same direction. This is going to be the center. Between one petal is going to be the spout, between the other petal is going to be the handle. So it won't matter which two you use, just use the ones that are going across from each other. The spout go into the one, the handle in the other. I'm just going to be able to draw this up and finish weaving it in. I take all of these petals and fold them so they're all pointing out. And I'm going to tie. If you have a little bit of extra ribbon, you can just tuck it right into the bottom. Now the entire teapot looks to be covered, but it has a nice base on it so that the heat is not going to bother your table. Your handle is right in here and there's your spout. Now this is going to fit quite a big teapot. If you have a smaller teapot you can take those holes and just put them down a little bit farther and it's going to clinch it in more down farther. So I now have a blooming teapot cover and that ribbon is just going to twist it all the way around. When you're ready to serve the tea, if you'd like, you can just undo the ribbon and have all the petals fall open 
you now have a nice table topper to serve your tea. Another bonus, it's easy to store. You can just fold it in half and all the leaves will stack together so it will fit nicely in a drawer ready for next time. We now have one very different looking tea cozy and this tea cozy blooms. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.